All right, we are on waiting for some folks to come on. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Get the light situation here a little bit. There we go. Around a little bit there. Here we go. Here come some folks now. Praise God. All right. Amen. Check my volume here. All right. Let me know uh, as you're coming on. If you can hear me okay, see me okay. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hey, Sister Heidi. How you doing? God bless you. Amen. Sister Jessica, good evening. And uh, folks are coming on. Thank you, Brother Ian, sound man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Still on the job. Hello, Sister Michelle, Sister Shelley, Sister Yolanda. Wow, here they come. Hi, Sister Nicole. Hey, God bless you, Pastor John. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Wednesday night on Facebook. That's been a while. This has uh, been a little while since we've done this. Amen. Hello, Sister Krista, Brother Andy. God bless you. Yes, thank you, Sister Joanne. Thank you, Sister Susan. Wow, that's a long name. God bless you. <laughs> Sister Alexis, Sister Cheryl, and Brother... brother uh, Ken, Sister Maria, and, your, and Dad, nice to see you folks coming on. Amen. So, so far, so good. Looks like everything's working pretty good. Got a little bright light behind me, but we'll be okay. It's getting darker out, so. Good evening, Brother Roger, Sister Jackie. Everybody getting ready for the 4th? Amen. Happy 4th of July, everyone. Uh, hopefully, you're going to have a nice day tomorrow. And uh, hello, Brother Carl and Sister Emma and Mary. Sister uh, Angie, bro, God bless you. So, folks are coming on. Just a beautiful night. Nice and kind of warm, but nice. A little summer night in July. Hard to believe it's July already. Sister Dora, God bless you. Amen. Hey, Sister Gloria Levine. Good to see you on tonight. Praise God. Amen. Sister Agnes, God bless you. Thank you. Happy 4th to everyone. Hey, Sister Lynn and Brother Tony, my paisans. Good to see you. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, we'll give it another minute or so, but so folks are coming on. And uh, that's great. So it's a great night. Hey, Sister Sandra, the birthday girl. Happy birthday, Sister Sandra. Hope you had a nice time with your hubby. Hey, Sister Pauline, how you doing? My old neighbor from days gone by. Nice to see you. Hey, wow. Hey, Pastor Sanchez, Reverend Sanchez, Bishop Sanchez. <laughs> wow, it's good to see you on. That's a treat. Don't usually have a chance to see you. Uh, you're off somewhere preaching. Hey, how you doing, Sister Terry? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Reverend Sanchez. God bless you and your family. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Amen. Hey, Sister Carol, Sister Agnes. Oh, good. Yeah, say happy birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, it's great to see you, Sister Chris. Good to see you too, my friend, and all my friends coming on here. Crystal, Sister Crystal, watching with Grandma, okay. Chrislyn, Sister Chrislyn Kukowski, amen. Hey, Sister Chrislyn, I just want to let you know, that scripture we were talking about today, about the, the lion and the lamb, well, when I, I read it again, just for fun, and you know what? The wolf and the lamb, and then the lion is mentioned right after it. So you were right. There's a lion right there in the same scripture. The wolf will uh, lay down with the lamb. It says it'll, it'll uh, eat the same as the lamb. But the lion, too, will also eat grass. So you know what? It's all there. So lions are definitely there. 
we were talking about that today, having a kind of a little Bible talk about uh, the thousand years when uh, there'll be peace on the earth and and uh, we'll be there with Jesus and preaching the gospel to those who need to hear it that didn't get a chance to hear it before. Amen. Especially the Jewish nation. And But that's a different subject. I'm not going to preach on that tonight. Amen. Uh, that's a whole other uh, avenue. Anyways, we had a, it was a good talk today. We had a good time. See, you're right, Sister Chrislyn. God, I, I, I adhere to your wisdom. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hey, Sister Cheryl, God bless you. Sister Irma. Hey, Sister Diane. Good to see you, Sister Lisa. All right. Well, folks are here, and there'll be some more coming on. And hopefully there's some watching, too. Uh, and there'll be more that will watch this later uh, through the week that might not be able to catch it tonight. So um, with that said, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody for your giving, uh, your faithfulness to the church. And um, if you want to give an offering, uh, there are many ways you can do that. You can mail it to P.O. Box 4017. I hope I'm saying that right. 4017? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> or the easiest way is to go online and uh, go to uh, fgichurch.org and just hit Give Now and uh, or, or use the, uh, uh, the giving app, uh, the Tithes app. And you can use that, too. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can do that if you'd like to, uh, to, to give. And thank you so much for your giving. And uh, hi, uh, Sister Dorothea. How you doing? Sister Patricia. It's, wow, that's coming in fast now. So praise God. It's good to see you. Yes, okay. I was right, Sister Sandra. Thank you. You can correct me. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of going off the top of my head here. So... <laughs> Sometimes those numbers all get mixed up, you know, so many numbers to remember. I don't know how we do it. Anyways, praise God. Well, it's so great to be with you tonight. Uh, just a real privilege uh, to be here to bring God's word to you. And uh, tonight it's, um, I don't know, it's kind of like exhortation night, maybe. Uh, just want to encourage your faith tonight. Want to kind of review a couple of things about our salvation. Kind of just strengthen uh, our foundation a little bit tonight, and uh, hopefully it'll bless you and and uh, cause your faith to grow. We've heard some tremendous messages and uh, and uh, very good messages uh, in the last few weeks, and just have been encouraging me and keeping our faith strong in the day we're living in. Amen. Well, if I were, uh, you know, the title of my message tonight is "It's not what you have, but who you have." It's not what you have, it's who you have. And tonight I want to talk about the who that we have in our life. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, Brother Angel. Amen. So anyways, um, the scripture reference we're going to use tonight is in Colossians 1, 12 through 18. It's a little bit of reading, but just want to give you a foundation but let's have a word of prayer before we begin. Lord Jesus, we just thank you tonight for this opportunity to bring your word, to bring the, the light of your word to your people. It, 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 the, the word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. It directs me, shows me where to go, keeps me safe, watches over me. The word is everything that we need in the day that we live in. So we thank you for that. Thank you for the folks that are coming on tonight to view this broadcast and those that will watch in the days to come. Bless them abundantly, I pray. Amen. Amen. So Colossians 1, uh, verses 12 through 18. Uh, first of all, Paul is saying, let's give thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Beautiful scripture, beautiful reminder of our salvation and what God has done for us. Now, he's translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In verse 15, he says, who is the image 
of the invisible God. The image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. For by him, by the Son, by the Son, were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things. By him, the Son, all things consist. And above that, he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. This is important. It's not what we have that's so important, but who we have. And who we have is the image of the invisible God. Who we have is the firstborn of every creature before any other creation was made. Who we have is the one who was there before all things, and who by him all things consist or have life. He is the exact living image of the invisible God. He is that firstborn of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. <laughs> Hallelujah. The firstborn, the preeminent one, the sovereign, the originator of all of creation. You know, God in the beginning, the ancient of days God, the, the God that was from everlasting to everlasting, before anything was created, before anything was made, he was an invisible God. You couldn't see him. If you were there at that time, you would not be able to see him because he had not yet given himself an image. But this scripture is telling us a very important fact that God created an image for himself. A living manifestation so that he could work with his creation. That image, that who, that person is Christ, my God, Jesus. Christ was there in the beginning with God because he was part of God. He was God. Christ and God are one in essence and life. The Christ, I'm going to refer to him a little bit as the Christ, because at this time, that's what he was, the Christ. The Christ is the essential manifestation of the unseen God. The Bible says he was God's firstborn. My goodness. Firstborn of all creatures, of all creation. I believe that he was made manifest in John chapter 1, starting at verse 1, where it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him there was not anything made that was made. In him, in the word, was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. The image of the unseen God is his living word that came to life that moment when he spoke at that time 
let there be light. And it there was light. Wow. <laughs> I feel the power of the Holy Ghost telling you this as a witness that the, the image that God created for himself is the manifestation of his word coming into life. You know, I can look at you tonight and not say a thing. I can look at you tonight and I could just close my mouth, but inside there's life. There's life. But then when I speak to you, when I speak to you, it brings life to my thoughts, to my heart. I'm showing you who I am. Oh, God, God gave us an image of himself, the invisible God, and it is the Christ, the Christ that was created before the foundation of the world. Now, we know that Jesus is God. I, I'm not debating that he's the same substance, but he, what I'm trying to show you is that that substance had to come alive in another manifestation for God to do his work. All right, hang with me, hang with me. That word was spoken for the, for the first time back then at that moment, and when it was spoken, it brought life instantly. Whatever he spoke came to pass. Whatever he spoke was made alive. Hallelujah. He became the image of the invisible God. Now this image worked with his people throughout the Old Testament. Time does not permit me to show you the pattern of how God worked with his people, but I'm going to give you a couple of instances, and you can do your own Bible study and look into this. Let's start with the creation. It's amazing because in, when he made man, what did he say? He spoke and he said, let us make man in our image. Well, wait a minute. He was the invisible God. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. He had an image now. That word was alive. It gave him a face, an image. Okay, at that time. All right, at that time, he said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. The image of God was in existence when he created Adam and Eve. And when he created all those the animals, the earth, stars, the sun, all of creation, that image is Christ. It's Christ. Moses saw the image of God later in the Old Testament. But only his backside, only his hinder part. In Exodus 33, 18 through 20, Moses prayed and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, show me thy glory. Show me who you are. And God spoke to him and said, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. And I and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou cannot see my face. For there is, shall no man see me and live at that time. But, he, but look what God said in verse 22. It shall come to pass, while my glory passes by, I will put thee in a cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand so you can see my back parts. God could only show Moses his back. His glory would have been, the image of God would have been so bright and so powerful, it would have destroyed Moses. He would not have been able to take it. God gave him a glimpse of who he was. And not only do that, he also declared the name of the Lord to Moses. He gave him a name for the image. I want you to see this, okay? Let's move on to Ezekiel. Ezekiel also saw God's image in a vision. Uh, Minister uh, Ben Satterjee talked about this when he brought uh, the, the study on Ezekiel and, and the 
the, the throne of God and the wheels in the middle of the wheels and, and what he had seen. Let's visit that again for one moment. Ezekiel says, I, above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne and the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. The likeness of the appearance of a man. Do you know who that appearance is? It was Christ. It was the Christ. Hallelujah. The Christ. God's man. God's anointed. God's redeemer. Messiah. It was the appearance of a man. And he goes on to say that the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of brightness around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of God. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard the voice of the one who spoke from that throne. Ezekiel saw the image of God that he had made for himself. He saw the word of God alive. It has an image. That image is Christ. Hallelujah. Let's fast forward. Let's move along. And there's other appearances of God in the Old Testament to Abraham, Jacob, and others where they saw a likeness or an image. Isaiah, they saw the image of God that he had created for himself so that he could work with his creation. But let's move to the New Testament. Because I want to get to the good part. <laughs> in the New Testament, in the fullness of time, that image, that word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. Now, he's not only the Christ, he had now become Jesus, the Christ, the only begotten of God in the flesh full of grace and truth, Jesus Christ. And now he is described, Jesus Christ, is described in Hebrews chapter 1-3 as the express image of God, who being the brightness of his glory, that's what Ezekiel saw, oh my gosh, the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he hath him by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. See, it's not so important what you have in life. It's important who you have. <laughs> and let me tell you something, believer, born again Christian tonight, you have the Christ, the same image that was in Hebrews, the same image that Ezekiel saw, the same image that uh, Moses saw, the backside of, the same image that man was created in in the beginning. You have the Christ living in in you. Hallelujah. Oh my God, that's enough to make anybody praise God right now. Just praise God for who you have. Oh, hallelujah. I, my life is not consistent in the what the what's that I have and the things that I have, but my life is consistent in who I have. I have the creator. I have the redeemer. I have the Savior. I have the Messiah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have Jesus, the Christ, the Christ, the Son of the living God. My God, my God, my God. Oh, hallelujah. As a believer, you have the Redeemer, the one and only, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn. Before Lucifer was created, Christ was there. Before Michael was created, Christ was there. 
This is why when Lucifer rebelled in the heavens, he could not dethrone God because God kept a secret from all of them. His first creation, the revealing of his word, the prophecy of the word that spoke life into existence. And let me tell you something, my friends, my brothers, my sisters, you have the creative force of God within you. You can speak for him also. You are also now the image of Christ in the earth. You have authority and power to speak like he spoke and to do like he did and to help like he helped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's, let's get a hold of this. Let's get a hold of this. It's who I have. I've got the one and only behind me. The only one that matters in the universe is in, is on my team. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Listen to this. As a believer, you, to the one and only creator, you have access. You have access to the one who has ultimate power and authority to forgive you and make you a new person. That's why he gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is him. It's his expression to us, his life force to us. It's what did he say? I will give you the spirit, but he will speak of me. He will bring to remembrance everything I've taught you. He's my, my, my life force with you. Hallelujah. Oh my gosh. Praise God. So through his spirit, we can overcome any obstacle, any character flaw. The Bible says no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. Thus saith the Lord. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Why? Because you, no weapon can, can go against Christ. No weapon can come against Christ. He will defeat it. He has defeated it. He has defeated Satan on the cross. He made an open show of him there. Hallelujah. And he ascended on high to the highest heavens and to the lowest parts of the earth that he may fill all things. He cleansed the heavens from revolt and, and, and the things that happened up there. He removed iniquity from the heavens. Hallelujah. He removed iniquity from the lower parts of the earth. His cleansing power and his resurrection brought everything back to the original place. Now there's one more thing left to do. We must put all things under his feet. God said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit down, <laughs> sit down, O word of God at my right hand. Hallelujah. Until I make every enemy your footstool. Woo! Glory! Oh, praise the Lord. Let the Holy Ghost manifest this truth to you. You have this. You have this faith inside of you. You have this power within you. Hallelujah. Listen, no weapon that is formed against us can prosper. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Nobody. No, no, no thing formed. Nothing can separate us from God's love and through his word to us. Now I'm going to ask you tonight the same question Jesus asked his disciples. Who do you say that I am? Who do you believe he is to you? Now they answered... They answered, some say you're Elias, Jesus. Come back from the dead. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah or some other prophet. But he asked them a very intimate question. Who do you say that I am? And old Peter, <laughs> hallelujah. I don't, I, I, Peter, something hit Peter. A revelation hit Peter. And he said, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You're the one. You're the one we've been waiting for. You're the one that God has given to us to redeem us. You are the Christ. And Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Now, why don't you say it tonight? Why don't you tell Jesus right now, you're my Christ. You're my Christ, the son of the living God. You belong to me too. 
Hallelujah. Not just for Peter, James, and John, and the disciples, and Paul, and Apollos, and, and all the others. He also, and Mary, and Martha, he belongs to us too. He belongs to us. Is this revealed to you? Do you have the revelation of who you have inside you? Hallelujah. When you know who you have inside you, you're not going to fret over silly things in life. You're not going to lose your composure. You're not going to, to fall apart every time something goes wrong. You're going to start to be, believe that, wait a minute, I may not have control over what's happening outside around me, but I have control of one thing right here. I have the Christ living in here. And Lord, you're going to work it out. You're going to change it. All things work together for the good to them that love the Lord, that are called according to his purpose. I can do all things through the Christ who strengthens me. Come on. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tell him you're my Christ. You're my anointed one. Hallelujah. It's not, it's not so uh, important to us of what we have. It's more important who we have. If you have the Christ, he's the anointed one, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the one and only firstborn of all creation. You see, the scripture teaches us that he was also the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Not only is he the word of God, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, but the flesh man, Christ Jesus, was given as an offering for sin once and for all on that cross. And now we can be forgiven, set free from sin and the curse of sin, and reunited back with God. We can be born again, born of the Spirit. We can be a child of God. Hallelujah. We can become an heir of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. He, re he redeemed all things. He restored all things. It's not the same life you had before. Don't let the enemy trick you into going back to what you were before. No, you left that life. You, you got free from that life. Move forward. Use your faith. Use the, believe what he said. Believe that you have him inside of you and you can conquer anything. Death has no more dominion over the Christ. He conquered death and the grave. Hallelujah. He rose again. He is sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for us, watching over us, doing things on our behalf, giving us favor. Hallelujah. I remember a time when I was in the catering business and someone was trying to steal my biggest stop that I had. That stop was over a thousand dollars a week in sales. One stop, one. And that was a lot of income for me just from one stop. And they were trying to steal it secretly using people inside the, the uh, machine shop, planting rusty cans on my truck and old sandwiches to discredit me and to make me look bad. And they almost succeeded until I went to prayer, until I went to my God, the Christ, and said, Lord, Someone's trying to demean me. If, if I lose this account, I won't be able to live. I won't be able to support my family. I, it'll take away from my giving. Lord, don't let this happen. And the scripture came to me so strong in my mind. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Hallelujah. I hung on to that scripture. I even had the person who was setting all this up uh, come up and laugh at me because he thought he was going to take over. But then God instructed me some wisdom. Go and talk to the owner of the company. He was in Colchester. I was in Glastonbury. I went there. I talked to him. And you know what he said to me? He said to me, Sal, I'm the only one who can take you off of my property. I am the only one who can stop you from coming to that business. And he looked into it and he found out what happened. He found out there were sabotage and he even fired the man that was working with the other caterer trying to take my spot. But let me show you what God did for me. 
Oh, I could have gloated in that. I could have raised up my spirit and said, ha, ah, good enough for you. No, that man was fired after working there for 15 years. That means he was going to lose his pension. He was going to lose everything. I went back to the man and I said, listen, please don't fire him. Give, he's, he, he know he did wrong. It was a mad mistake, but give him his job back. He listened to me and he gave him his job back. And that man came up to me with tears and he, and he took his hands and put it on my shoulder, looked me square in the eye and he said, thank you. Thank you for, for forgiving and having mercy upon me. Let me tell you something. God showed me something that day. <laughs> And ever since that day, my friend, God is the only one who has to say in my life. God is the only one, hallelujah, that has supreme authority over me. Hallelujah. No circumstances, no devils, no demons, nothing. Hallelujah. He's the only one that has to say. And I, like the man that owned the company, I serve a God that owns it all. Hallelujah. And you too, you too can have that kind of faith today in your God. So listen. You have the Christ. You have the anointed one. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of God is in Christ. And all the fullness of God is in you. Because you have Christ. Wow. Woo. Listen. And you are complete in him. You are complete in him. How can we be complete when we have so many problems? When we get down on ourselves and we self-condemn and we, we do this and we do that. Stop. It's time to stop condemning ourselves. We are complete in Christ right now. He sees us as a finished product, not as a struggling product. So if you have a struggle, if there's something in your makeup that's causing it, bring it to the Christ. Let him heal it. Let him heal the hurts of the past and the condemnations of the past. Things that, tie, see, that's what it is. It's something that's, that's burdening your conscience. It's something that's causing you to keep guilt in your heart. Maybe you didn't even do it, but the guilt is there. That's the, the trick of the enemy is to get you sidetracked. Look away from the Christ and look at your own self. No, I don't want to look at myself. I want to look at him. But look at this. this write this scripture down. Colossians 2, 9 and 10, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. He's the boss. <laughs> Reverend Sanchez, he is the boss, and he, what he says is going to happen. What he says in us and through us is going to come to pass also. We are his instruments on the earth. We have Christ living in us. But now we, we are his image. We are his representation to the world. The church is the body of Christ in the earth. And the works that he did, we can do also. We have a commission. We, we, he, he didn't say, go and do this or this or this or this. He just said, go and tell them the good news. Take every opportunity that you can, when you can, to share the gospel with someone. In John chapter 14, verses 12 through 15, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever, oh God, help me, help me, Lord, help me to believe this next scripture. Hallelujah. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do, <laughs> that the Father may be glorified in the Son, and the Son, the Christ, may be glorified in you. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. In Luke 10, 19, 20, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. 
Nothing shall by any means hurt you. But in this rejoice not, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice, because your names are written in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Because I have the Christ, my friend, I'm going to go to heaven with him. I have eternal life with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our prayers and requests unto God are not based solely on our own faith. Not anymore. Not after I realize this revelation that Peter had and that Paul had also. Because I'm going to quote what Paul said about this. He said that his faith was coupled with Jesus' faith. He said, the life I now live, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. My God, my God, I am not alone in my faith. I'm not standing all alone against the mountains and the obstacles and the things that try to come against my life. There's one greater (laughs) inside of me that's standing with me. (laughs) The greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. And now we can have joy and peace in believing. Hang on to your faith. Don't let it go. No matter what you see, what you hear, believe God. Rejoice. Paul said, listen, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. Why? Because joy in God gives us strength. It gives us hope. See, the enemy wants us to look at our problems and hang our head in shame that it, as if God has forsaken us. He has never forsaken me. I don't care what I'm going through. I don't care what's happening in my body. Jesus has never left me. He's promised. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Am I believe in God for miracles in my life? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have the Christ. I've prayed over my legs. I prayed over my heart, my head. Hallelujah. Maybe some will say it's a little fanatic laying hands on myself and claiming the promises of God. But I, I, I advise you to do the same. Let your faith go. Launch out. Launch out on your faith tonight. Launch out on the faith you've heard in the last messages. Put it to good use. Put it to, to, to work in your life. Jesus wants us to use our faith and our authority that he has given us as his follower. My friends, it's not what we have. It's who we have. It's who we have. You and Jesus are the dream team for your life. You and Jesus are are an army that cannot be defeated. And not only do you have Jesus standing with you, my friend, you got the whole church. You got a pastor behind you. You got a whole church behind you. And if there's someone tonight that's listening to my message and you don't have a good church, come and visit ours. Come and see the good things that God is happening in our church. The, the, the power that's at our altar that encourages us, encourages us every week, gives us faith and strength. You're the dream team, you and Jesus, to go and win the lost and expand his will on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I personally believe what that means is I am the will of God wherever I go. I can exact change. I can effect change. I can help people. I can help governments. I can help leaders. I can help nations. In my prayers, my giving, I can make a difference. Remember who you have with you and in you. It is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let's praise him tonight. Let's just praise him for a moment. And let's just thank him for his word. I hope that this word has encouraged you and strengthened you and given you that faith, that Jesus faith, that power faith that he had. Uh, hallelujah. He, he said we can do it. He says we can believe it. He said all things are possible if we'll just believe. He said he would do it if we ask him. Uh, listen, go for it. 
Go for it. Stop stop trivializing over things that don't matter. Don't worry about. No wonder he said, don't take no thought of what you're going to eat or drink or clothing and all the things that we we take like, you know, as, and making it so important. Yes, it's important. And God knows you need everything. He knows you need a house. He knows you need a car. He knows all that. But let me tell you something what's greater than that. It's the who. I'd rather have him with me because if I have him with me, I'll find another car. I'll find a house. I'll find anything that I need because he's going to help me. He's going to watch over me. And even if he has to send ravens like he did to Elijah, uh, they, you know, they, they even baked him a cake. The angels baked him a cake. I think of my sister-in-law, Liz Mancini, one of the best, uh, one of our best bake, uh, cake bakers. Uh huh. Hallelujah. You know, but uh, let me tell you, the, the angels prepared a cake for him. And I often wondered, is that what was that the first angel food cake? You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe it was. But I'm going to tell you what I'm, I know Elijah smacked his lips and, and, and maybe in heaven we'll have some of that cake for dessert. Huh? Reverend Sanchez, maybe when we sit at that dinner table with Jesus, there may be some of that angel food cake around. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let's pray now. Let's pray together. And if you have a need, a real need in your life that you want a miracle for or a divine intervention, we're going to pray along with you and we're going to pray as one in Christ, in Christ, that, that, that the need will be met. Hallelujah. That you will get exactly what you need and leave it with God. Don't, don't try to look at the picture of how it's going to work. Just say, Lord, this is what I need. Bring it in any way you want to. Hallelujah. So let's pray together. Hallelujah. You can put uh, your um, need here if you'd like uh, briefly. And us, all us folks will be praying right now in the next minute. Okay. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I come to you. You're seated at the right hand of God. The great word of God. You, you, your office was to become flesh. To offer the flesh man, Jesus as an offering for sin. But then you resurrected the flesh man, Jesus, as a representation of your power. If the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, it will quicken our mortal bodies also. It will bring life to us also. But you're also going to come back in another image, the image of the word of God riding the white horse. Hallelujah, with a sword of the Spirit coming out of your mouth, the Word of God, in white, your hair white as wool, your feet burnished with brass. Hallelujah, your vesture dipped in blood, the total, the total circle of salvation, the total redemption and plan of God, all in one image of the powerful Word of God. Hallelujah, and we're going to ride with you. And then we'll see you for who you really are when we get to heaven, Lord. After the final judgment and we come into the city, we will see you for what you really look like. I can't wait for that day. God, tonight, Lord Jesus, there's needs that are coming before your throne, the throne of grace at this time. The throne of grace is still open today to come and find grace to help in the time of need. Lord, I ask you, to, to answer these prayers. Answer them, Lord. But I want you, Lord, to answer them in the best interest of the person that's going to help them in the best possible way. I believe that, God. I believe you do that for me all the time. I don't want to just look at what I think I need or want. I want you to provide it for me. Because if you provide it for me, it's going to last. It's going gonna, it's gonna to endure. It's going to work. So, Lord, I thank you tonight. Thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for your people who pray for me too, Lord, and, and think of me and help me, Jesus. We can help each other because we all have Christ within us. We're all part of the same body of Christ that make up the super complex called Jesus the Christ. Lord, so bless each and every individual over the holiday. Let them be have peace with their families. Let families be one. And come to church on, on this weekend, Friday night, Lord, the, the youth gathering, the special meetings with uh, Pastor Jeremiah Collins and, and, and a special meeting we have then and the 
Bless the youth over the weekend, Lord, on Saturday for their special meetings. And then let's all come back on Sunday and let's worship the Creator, the great King of kings and Lord of lords. And no, maybe you haven't totally been crowned yet because you're waiting for all of us to come home. But it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. So we just thank you for that in your wonderful name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I hope this encouraged you tonight. You have a wonderful, wonderful 4th of July. Amen.